Hello everybody, uh, in this uh, video we're going to start the next chapter which is chapter number 27 uh, which has the title of convective mass transfer between phases um, and actually in my opinion this is the most important chapter um, in the convection part uh, of, of the mass transfer course because this is the basis of many many things or, or most of the, the, uh, the mass transfer operations uh, are based on the the concepts that we are gonna cover in this chapter so it's it's extremely important and um, I believe that uh, without the good and strong understanding of this uh, the concepts in this chapter uh, like you, you're gonna miss a lot uh, regarding the mass transfer processes in absorption distillation stripping adsorption or any other mass transfer processes and this is because all the mass transfer processes include uh, mass transfer between different phases so you have to understand what is the the challenges or what are the challenges that we face in mass transfer between different phases and how we deal mathematically with these kind of systems so uh, i'm gonna make this video as an introduction and i believe this is a very very important introduction so i hope um, like you pay attention to what is 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 gonna be covered here and to uh, to keep this in mind when dealing with any uh, mass transfer between different phases uh, systems so to uh, to to un or, or to start we have to uh, like uh, understand one very important difference between the uh, convection mass transfer and molecular diffusion mass transfer in case of molecular diffusion we we, we have already covered this in details and we we saw the equations and how we deal with them uh, but the the main idea or the, the the common thing that was in in all the cases in in molecular diffusion was that it only happens in one phase so if you have let's say uh, uh, any system stagnant water stagnant fluid stagnant air or whatever this is or a solid solid material and molecular diffusion is taking place inside this phase then this must be a homogeneous phase it means that this is water this is air this is whatever the phase is um, and the equations are put so that they 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 cover uh, or, or describe mass transfer in this in this phase within the boundaries that you set and the the boundaries that you have most probably are uh, the boundaries with another phase so maybe a solid phase uh, gas phase or whatever the phase is so whatever is taking place in the other phase whatever this phase is is gonna be a boundary condition for for the molecular diffusion equation it cannot be included in the molecular diffusion equation um, so this is one of the the main characteristics of the molecular diffusion uh, systems but in case of convection if you have a species that is diffusing from a liquid phase to a gas phase or to a solid phase or or otherwise um, uh, the 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 equation that you have can describe uh, of course in, in in case of 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 convection in both phases so the equation that you have can describe the mass transfer in the two phases describe having different phases so so this is this is a very very important thing that you need to understand about the molecular diffusion um, and this of course is a, i mean about convection and the, of course this is uh, like a very big advantage to convection because you can describe mass transfer in different phases with uh, with one or two equations which is is very simple compared to what we see in case of um, in molecular diffusion um, however despite having a lot of advantages with 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 dealing with different phases but there are many challenges that we have or we, we will face when dealing with uh, different phases and the main the main the main challenge that we will face is uh, is related to the units uh, or, the, or the units of concentrations that we use and to to understand this i would like to give an example first with uh, an easy to understand and a familiar system which is convection heat transfer so let's take this example of uh, uh, a cup of water or uh, like a container that's full of water at temperature of 80 degrees celsius and this is a well mixed uh, uh, cup or, or container so heat transfer in in this container is 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 convection heat transfer and the same for the uh, the the gas phase outside that's a big room that ha is is kept at temperature of 25 degrees celsius again we have turbulence inside using this fan so mass or, or heat transfer in this 
uh, in this phase is uh, convection uh, heat transfer. So if, if you um, I think of, about this very, very simply, you'd know that there is going to be some heat transfer because there is temperature here, which is higher than the temperature here. So you'll have heat transfer from the high temperature uh, medium into the low temperature medium. So this is simply what, what will happen. And we can simply predict this this temperature profile. So the this is the temperature in the bulk of the liquid phase. I'm sorry, this should be L, but this is the, the temperature in the bulk of liquid phase. This is the, temp the temperature in bulk of gas phase. And you have this, this profile here. So it decreases gradually uh, until it reaches the temperature in the gas phase. Here we have what I call TS, which is T surface or T interface, whatever the name that you want to give it. So this is the temperature at the interface between the gas and liquid phase, uh, which is uh, the common in between so it's it's the same one side is gas and the other side is liquid so we can represent the flux equation in case of heat transfer using this equation which is q equals hl which is the heat transfer coefficient in the liquid phase multiplied by t minus ts which is the driving force in the liquid phase and this equals 2hg which is the heat transfer coefficient in the gas phase multiplied by ts minus t infinity which is the driving force in the gas phase this is very very like well-known thing and it's simple it's logical everything is fine but if you try to uh, to use this equation you'll find one one challenge here which is uh, the surface temperature it's very 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 hard to know the surface temperature you can know the temperature in the bulk of the liquid and the bulk of the gas because any any temperature sensing uh, equipment is either it's a thermometer or any other thing will 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 be measuring the bulk of the liquid uh, it's very very hard to keep this the thermometer at the surface to and and to make sure that it measures the temperature at the surface accurately so it's not some, something that we can easily get um, and it's not practical to use so we we prefer to use the bulk temperatures which is the bulk of the liquid phase the bulk of the gas phase so i want to use this as the overall driving force which is t minus t infinity in case of having this equation uh, written in terms of the overall driving force then we have to change the mass transfer or the heat transfer coefficient because it's 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 not dealing with the same driving force and it's not dealing with the same phase actually so here this is a gas phase uh, transfer coefficient this is a liquid phase transfer coefficient but if i use the overall driving force then i am dealing with liquid and gas phase so i must have another uh, heat transfer coefficient that takes into account the two phases uh, or the heat transfer coefficient in the two phases so we use what we call the overall heat transfer coefficient which is u and u is uh, calculated from this equation 1 over u equals 1 over hl plus 1 over hg and this is very simple to and like relation that can be uh, that can be proved easily uh, using heat transfer relation so this is what we do here uh, to use the, the the parameters that we can measure and to calculate the flux and the rate of heat transfer and any other thing uh, one more thing that we need to discuss here which is the equilibrium so if I leave this system for one, two, three, four days or a week or, or a month or for, for, for enough time for heat transfer to to continue until it, it's completed. So if I leave it for infinite time, then what will happen here is that this temperature and this temperature will be equal. So this is the equilibrium criteria that the temperature difference is zero which is this. So if I have this difference is zero, then Q equals zero. So I have no heat transfer. So the system is at equilibrium. So it's it's very simple, very logical, even without the knowledge of the mass or the heat transfer relations and the equations, you can you can tell easily that this is the equilibrium. Uh, this this is very, very simple. But in if, if we try to apply the same concept to mass transfer, we will find that there is uh, some differences in, in, in concept. It's the same, but in the details, there are uh, there are some differences. Uh, let's say we are talking about a case similar to the other case, which is uh, or, or the heat transfer case, which is. But in, in this case, it's a mass transfer case of species from gas phase to liquid phase, which is called absorption. So the liquid absorbs this species from the gas phase. So what we will have here is a, 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 a partial pressure profile for the gas phase from the bulk of the gas phase to the interface. And then we will have another profile in the liquid phase. We have here the, uh, the, the liquid phase interfacial concentration and the liquid phase bulk concentration. And we can repeat the same procedure like before. We will uh, put the, the mass transfer 
um, uh, flux using this equation, which is flux is mass transfer coefficient multiplied by the driving force. This is the liquid phase part, the gas phase, uh, the, the gas phase part. This is the liquid phase uh, mass transfer coefficient multiplied by the liquid phase driving force. So this is the equation. Again, we have the same challenge of using interfacial concentration. So we would like to use the overall driving force. And now comes the issue. If you try to apply the same procedure to the, the this case of mass transfer, you will be uh, calculating the rate of or the flux of, of mass transfer using the driving force of partial pressure minus concentration. And this is a big problem. I cannot do that. I cannot subtract concentration from partial pressure. They are two totally different units. I cannot do that. So this is this is a, a, a big challenge now. I cannot use the overall driving force. I cannot use the interfacial concentrations. If I if I if I know the interfacial concentrations, the problem is done. I know the bulk. I can easily get the bulk uh, partial pressure. And if I know the interfacial concentration, which cannot be measured to be or practically speaking. And if I know the mass transfer coefficient, then I know the flux and I'm, I'm done. But I don't know it, so it's it's a big problem now. So I have to find out how to deal with it. Uh, also for the interfacial concentrations, in case of heat transfer, the interfacial temperature was was very simple. It is the same temperature between here and here. But in this case, I have two different units on the two different sides of the same interface. Uh, in, in, in heat transfer, we, we, we didn't have this challenge because we describe the temperature uh, in liquid phase in the same way we describe it in the gas phase. In both cases, it is, it is in, in Celsius, it's in Kelvin, it's in Fahrenheit, whatever the unit that you use, but it's a, a unit of temperature. It doesn't, it doesn't depend on the phase. It's going to be temperature, either it's a liquid phase, either it's a gas phase, either it's solid phase. It's, it's temperature anyway. So you don't have any problem with subtracting the temperature in two different phases. But in our case here, in case of mass transfer, it's a big problem. You are, you are dealing with units of concentration which depend on the phase. Um, even if you are using mole fractions or mass fractions, it's not gonna be it's gonna be it's not gonna be the same because the mole fraction is number of moles over the total number of moles. Here you have number of moles of gas phase or a gas species over the total number of phases in the gas phase, which is not the same as the total number of moles uh, or, or the ratio in the liquid phase. So so even if I have mole fractions, it's not gonna be possible to uh, to subtract these these fractions together. You cannot subtract subtract x minus y, for instance. This is this is not possible. So uh, this means that we need something else. We need one more information or one more relation to relay this concentration to this pressure to tell me what is the equilibrium uh, relation. How can I represent the relation between the interfacial concentration and pressure, which we will we will know later will be in equilibrium? How can I represent the overall driving force? This P A minus C A. I need to add something else. I need to get the the concentration of, of, of A, which is in equilibrium with the partial pressure of A, or, or the, the partial pressure, which is in equilibrium with C A to get this. So th there is something that we need to know. So this is this is the, the, the message that we need to, to get from this. And this information that we, we need to know is called the equilibrium relation. This is extremely important. This is a, a very, very, very important piece of information that you need to know if you are dealing with a mass transfer system. If you don't know the equilibrium relation, by no means you will be able to uh, to, to get the, 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 the result of the mass transfer process or to know the output concentrations or to know anything. Because this is what tells you the driving force. This is what tells you how far you are from the driving the 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 the, um, the equilibrium uh, of this system. And this is gonna tell you how fast or slow you are gonna reach this equilibrium. So without this information, you you will not be able to to know anything about the system. So this is a very very critical and important thing. We use this in 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 absorption and distillation in 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 any uh, in in in, uh, in in any mass transfer process. It's 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 uh, like a must. This is a, a very, very 
crucial piece of information. This can be an equation, this can be tabulated data, this can take any, any form that has different forms that we will see later as well. But this is the take home message of this, of this video, that the equilibrium relation is an information that you need, you need to know about your, your mass transfer system, because without this relation, you will not know how this system will behave. Uh, this this is very 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 important it was not in heat transfer because in heat transfer it's a built-in equilibrium relation the delta t is the equilibrium relation here it's not like a heat transfer you have to know it as a separate relation so in the next video we'll talk more about this equilibrium relation we will know some basic or simple equilibrium relations and then we will uh, we'll see how to deal with these kind of relations so i'll see you then inshallah goodbye